Welcome ladies and gentlemen, hello Raise Your Edge community and if you can see me on the big screen instead of Ben CB that usually means I have plenty of cash game content in my backpack that is going to go out to you guys. We are starting with some high stakes live poker, a recording that I played like a few months ago. It's the second time I look at it and I figured it might be a cool idea to let Ben CB join the booth, comment on my play since he's at WSOP right now in Las Vegas playing live poker so he might be the ideal candidate to comment on it. Second of all, there will be a free 90-minute webinar coming to you this month. So if you want to attend that, it's going to be about my leagues in my career moving up through the stakes. Basically, we go through things that I did wrong that I needed to fix, not only back then in my own career, but the same things I do with my students nowadays as well. So it's completely free. Link in the description. If you want to sign up, do it quick. It's first come, first serve. And the third bullet I have in my backpack is there will be a big update to the online cash apprentice course about exactly that topic. How to fix your own leaks, how to go from yeah being break even, having maybe a losing red line, maybe having a terrible blue line to fixing those things, knowing what you do wrong and you what you can do about it in a very easy way without endless solver studies. And now without further ado, please welcome Mr. Ben CB commenting on my play on these high stakes poker game. Uh, also, if you like the video, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. If you want to see more cash game content, leave me something in the comments. I will be very happy to read that and see you guys on the next one. Okay, first hand, chip counts to start it off. Um, we could buy in before start of the stream, so we could choose our buy-in beforehand. Uh, I was last to get uh, the seed, so I was last in choosing my chip stack, uh, which is pretty good. So I think 10k for a 25-50 game is pretty standard, I would say. Mm -hmm. And we jump right into the first hand. Uh, right picking up a monster and get 3-bet. Um, by the button... Uh, we played in that same lineup yesterday or like a day before the stream uh, was made or recorded. So we kind of know each other. So I know he is a regular, pretty aggressive. For 200 big blinds, I think you can make a case for calling because you're not really super happy to get it in pre. Uh, but I think against the button range, I can still comfortably four bet this for value. So yeah. I didn't really randomize it and just went for the four bet in these positions. Yeah. I mean, I guess he's three betting hands like eights, nines, tens also, and then is never folding to a four bet. Yeah, for sure. And if he five bets, then we can call. What do you do if he five bets? Yeah, I think I'm calling. I think I'm calling. I think sticking it in doesn't make any sense. And then basically the plan is to call, and if the flop is kind of decent, just go with it. I think I have to. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But it would be, would be a pretty tough spot. Would be a pretty tough yeah. spot. It's a pretty big four bet. It's like four Yeah, bets. yeah, yeah. I Ah, uh, nice. So he he went five hundred. I went sixteen hundred. I think round three x is kind of standard, and I went a little bit more since we are so deep. And if I mean, he's three bet times four fifty, and you make it, you make it almost a bit more, almost four x. Oh, right? he did four fifty. Okay, okay, yeah, that's that's huge then. I thought yeah. he went maybe five hundred. I could go a little bit. Well, less I would have thought like fourteen fifty or fifteen hundred, but yeah, I think it's not a big. Yeah, for sure. And the flop is actually pretty interesting because so deep, I think it's not really a full range bet, even being in a four bet pot. Uh, you see yeah. him folding jacks here pretty quickly, which I'm really impressed about. This is a very good lay down. Uh, I, I don't think like every kind of player would make that lay down so quick. Uh, so yeah, I like that a lot. But yeah, kind of difficult board to play, but I figured to stay with um, uh, the simple approach and just start with a small bet with my range and then go from there. Yeah. I mean, even your bluffs, I think ace high boards um, are also pretty good for you, right? Yeah, um, for sure. Is he calling ace queen off against the four bed? Probably not. Like he shouldn't, but I could see him doing that on the button. But I think he shouldn't really, at least in theory. Mostly yeah, suited But hands. he can have an ace queen suited that people yeah, for sure. an ace suited. For sure. And he connects very well between the 8 and the 7. He has way more 6-5 suited, 10-9 suited type hands, which I basically never yeah. have. So across all runouts, he probably makes a lot more straights and two pairs than I do. Yeah. 
Here I went with uh, Ace-4, multi-way. You can make an argument of squeezing out of the big blind with that hand. Um, mm -hmm. I went for the call and also for um, calling the seabed, I believe. I think there's no real reason to raise. Okay. And I, and I, yeah, thinking, I yeah. think from what I've seen, how the way people play live is they're V-pipping in pretty much every single note a little bit too wide. Yeah. So I think with wide, wider squeezing, wider three bidding, um, it's a nice adjustment. But of course, call is also. Yeah, I had the same impression when playing in this lineups. I saw like four bids from under the gun from a seven suited type stuff. So uh, yeah, definitely range is really really wide, action packed. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun. This is like I think one week before WSOP Europe. Uh, so yeah, lots of action going on. John, I'm debating folding already, but with two flush draws out there and having an ace that can still improve against his pocket eights or against a very strong hand, uh, I think I have a mandatory call and pray but, that it goes check-check at some point. I actually would prefer raising in this spot because I think he folds pocket fives to pocket tens very often oh, against okay. the raid and you get the calls from the flush draws. I see oh, that okay. very often that especially less experienced players are just like, all right, I want to bet for free showdown and then they fold against the race, but you get the calls from ace jack hearts, ace ten hearts, and they just check it back on the river. Ooh, that's really sexy. I think I like that. I think I like yeah. that. Kind of a freeze play, so to speak. You fold out, or like a, like a two-sided play. You fold out better, get called yeah. by worse, right? That's sick. Yeah. yeah, that's sick. And especially his sizing is like, I've seen it also now here during the WSOP. You you could tell when people have these kind of like yeah sizing style. Show them by your hands, and they mm -hmm. don't want to get raised. And yeah, especially um, I think it's an underrated skill for poker players yeah. to read into sizing and timing tells. Yeah. Andrea calls with the king jack off on the button. I think this is a uh, most a lot of players would. Uh, I mean, in these live games, it's probably fine. Um, but. But I, I would assume we also want to be three betting at some Yeah, yeah. Three bet or four. I like that a lot. I would stick with it. Also, it was a straddle. So sometimes we play 25, 50, 100 here. So this mm -hmm. is why uh, Ace King now goes 400, for example, because it's straddled. Um, yeah. And then this is, I think, the first very interesting hand. There are also hands from other players in there, I think, as well, that were kind of interesting that we can look at. But for the most part, it's uh, just me trying to play, trying to play very, very big pots here. Three betting from the small blind against the cutoff. Uh, still 200 big blinds deep, so I'm not looking really to get it in here. Yeah. But <clears throat> certainly against a four bet, cannot really fold. But definitely would sometimes think about it because cutoff against the blinds, especially cutoff against big blind, or even more extreme middle position or under the gun against the blinds, I think people are finding a hard time to find proper four bet bluffs. I don't think they find the king 10 suited, the a6 suited that they should sometimes have and uh, basically stick with calling those hands. Yeah. And there we go. Also 3,500 looked so strong to me. I can remember that. I haven't looked at the footage before, so this is kind of, yeah, seeing it the the first or maybe the second time. Yeah. So I remember how I how I felt in that spot. I was really debating. Like jamming is out of the question. Calling and then playing a seven k pot out of position was kind of uh, iffy anyway. Uh, but I think without having a very strong read that the worry guy might be too tight, uh, I can't go anywhere. So I stick yeah. with peeling, and then pray that the flop is kind of decent. And when the flop is kind of low, I think I just have to close my eyes and go with it. Interesting check back from the ace king. I guess oh, you already just... you already see that? So you are a little bit in front then, I think. I still I'm haven't called. Huh? Yeah, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen a flop yet. I'm still tanking oh. in my... I'm at 745. Yeah, I mean, I just... Jumping to the decision decision points. Oh, okay. Okay, where are you at now? At the flop? No, no, I'm on the turn. Okay, okay. I'm on the turn too now. Okay, so it went check, check on the flop. Very, very interesting. And I was like, okay, how do I get the most money? 
And I think on the three turn, especially when every ace high has a gut shot, there's a high chance that I don't fold for one pot size bet. I have a little bit less than pot size left. I have hands like queen jack in spades, king queen in spades, uh, something like uh, ace, ace high hands, not so much. And then I just mm -hmm. put it in to try to get the maximum from ace king. I could bet small gem river, but I think I get the call from ace king here a lot. Basically, that yeah. was the plan. And if you fall, if you fold, you don't mind either. Because yeah, I don't mind either. Yeah, I fold away. You fold it pretty quickly. So yeah, pretty interesting spot. You could bet small on the turn and then jam the river too, I think. But in this mm -hmm. case, I just went for it. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see from all the table talk, we played the last night basically for, I don't know, 18 hours straight, straddled, live game, drinks, uh, stand-up game, I think, and button games. So we know each other pretty well and just try to have a good time. And then, yeah, lots of action happening. Good round, good round of, of poker for sure. It was tons of fun. Poker Sam here with a very loose preflop call. Yeah. We will see him again. Like, I can say so much. He's like playing very loose, is in a lot of hands, always kind of trying to figure it out. Uh, Ace 3 4 also interesting when you are three way. I don't think I want to see bet a ton because the yeah. 4 3 is also pretty good for the big blind. He has lots of 5x, deuce x. He's the only one probably with five deuce in his range. Um, so I have to be a little bit careful. But Ace Jack, I think, just barely makes the cut. Having a heart helps. I think. Yeah. But yeah, already the plan is kind of to keep the pot small and to play a massive one. Be careful when I get raised. And as long as I get called against small sizings, I'm pretty confident that I want to value bet as thin as possible. And he folds nines on the flop right away. That's good. I like that. Also has no heart. Nothing really to do. Queen pretty safe card for me as well. And now I think yeah. I want to um, you could make an argument for checking and protect your checking range a little bit, but I think as long as you don't get punished for it and people start turning hands into a bluff when you check, I think value betting on the sinner side, especially live, is always better. So I think I'm going for the double barrel here, if I remember correctly. I mean, you also have insane amount of uh, insane amount of um, ace fives, a six suited, a seven suited that you can check, right? Yes, so you yes, don't need yes. To yeah, and they make they make way more sense to check as well. Yeah, get the quick fold, which is fine. Can live with it. Interesting uh, decision with the ace check suited. Mm -hmm. First, interesting race with a five three off. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I said this round is like really, really good. I was not really sure what to make of this. Usually, big sizing needs strength, especially live. And it was fifty big blind. You can see someone calls the fifty, and he goes eight x. So, and I would really like to see a flop, and I would really hate to get like a big, big four bet in with the sand. So I stick with calling. Also plays well multi way. Um, and I don't mind keeping the limper in either. Oh yeah, he raised to 8x. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 400 euros. So I don't know if he missed it that we don't have the straddle on or if he's re really having a strong hand. So I was kind of... Yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, when we face these weird sizings, I would also think it's strong. Mm -hmm. So then your call makes a lot of sense. I mean, this I mean, this hand is just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he bets super big with no equity. And I stick to calling. I think that's, yeah, pretty standard. Yeah. I hate not having a club, obviously. Uh, there's, there's no club on the flop, I mean. And then... Um, on the turn, I think I still have, yeah, a good amount of equity, but obviously this spot sucks. And he reps really, really strong. Pre-flop, absolutely bombing the flop. Now he bets uh, 875, which is a little bit more than one third. 
I can't remember what I did here, but I think I, I should stick to calling. Because the king yeah. is so valuable as an out. He can bluff with jack x and then improve on a king. And whenever whenever he improves, I improve to something better. But I made the lay down here. Yeah, I think he just got you with your preflop sizing. Yeah. 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 And I was like, hmm, how clean? Like, if the nine comes, I don't really have that much implied odds. I think the king is maybe really good, but maybe also kills my action a little bit. And I basically thought I was never good or anywhere close to be good. So, yeah, yeah I made it tight later on. He got me there for sure with a 5-3. Surprised he didn't show. Yeah, three. Yeah, I think in these yeah. situations where it's easy to level yourself and like, ah, oh, the big sizing... Just sticking to the fundamentals, right? He raised big, yeah, but he can also be full of shit. And um, I would just, the most thing I would be worried about is him having ace king. You know, like this line, yeah. I would put him on ace king. Yeah, big could be. Big pre-flop, bats the flop, then this weird turn sizing. He doesn't really know what to do. Yeah. And this kind of sucks. You call and then goes check, check on the river and you lose against ace king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you hate your life. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. So I squeeze ace queen off here. I think that's like a prime candidate for squeezing. Uh, Offsuit, you want to play heads up if possible. Um, so yeah, thinning out the field a little bit is my plan here. Uh, obviously, it didn't I work. Think ace queen against the squeeze just folds, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think or or it could be forward bluffing. I would really or like him. Bluffing, yeah, yeah, forward bluff. I would love to see that. Basically, best blockers uh, to just forward bluff. He could use ace king as a forward bluff as well. So yeah. keep. Um, but yeah, calling is for him super difficult because he's in a sandwich and always has to worry about okay, what's 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 uh, what's happening after him. Here, without yeah. a spade on a flop where the caller connects really well between the four seven and jack, like all the ten nines, five six, obviously all the sets and jack x pairs. I decided to just give up. Yeah, I th yeah. I think you only would continue with like ace king, ace and spades, or ace king, yeah. ace and spades. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, just have to be tight here. What would usually be your bluffs? What would your squeezing range here? Just very linear, or what uh, kind of hands? Would you so big, big offsuit hands always work. Like king queen, ace queen, ace jack works. But also the suited versions obviously work pretty well. And I would also go a little bit wider and also start with like smaller pocket pairs, like pocket eights or maybe pocket sevens, because these have a huge interest in playing heads up as well. And I can see, especially in live games, even a little bit more, or in low stakes online poker, people calling too many small pairs to three bets and squeezes, which always puts mm -hmm. me kind of in a good spot so this kind of would yeah. be my range blockers are always nice mm -hmm. to have and then pairs and very rarely something like five four suited six six seven suited because if they call these ace eight suited hands to squeezes then i'm kind of owning myself because whenever i make a small flush i look into a bigger flush yeah jacks again so you would just call six seven suited yeah i would call yeah yeah i would call i would call Also, there's no drop or rake at the table because every player played that rake beforehand to make the game faster, which I really like. So the dealer what can just mean? put out that. So usually in cash games, it gets raked and dropped by the dealer. And yeah. here to play more hands and to make it faster, we all paid the rake beforehand for an hourly, basically. Ah, okay. So that, that we can play more hands and the dealer ha hasn't to figure out like what kind of he wants to drop. Yeah, I three bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixes. I mean, he has a pair, so I yeah, just went with it, I guess. And ace queen suited calls as well. Yeah, I mean, ace queen suited is a very standard call, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Kaching. What about ace jack? Ace ten suited. Mm, I would still call. I would still call. Yeah. Depending on, like, Andrea um, is pretty loose and, but also pretty aggressive. Um, but if we have someone who is like always calling, then you could even argue about forbetting, getting me out of the way, and Andrea is always weak, or like always in quotes, obviously, um, and start forbet bluffing. Mm -hmm. Three ways. I don't think I have massive sizings. I think heads up, I could have a massive sizing, and then my hand would be a decent candidate to trap, um, especially yeah. when I have the jack of diamonds. Uh, but I think three-way, I just end up betting and then with a smaller sizing, not really bigger than half pot, I think. Ace queen peels once, maybe, or should be his plan. Hates probably not having a spade on the flop. 
that would be the six for Andrea. Would I'm be just very afraid because we often have aces kings. We often have ace king. It's ace like, way. yeah, I mean, flush draws. Like, I think I would check for. I w I wouldn't call you with ace queens. You did no back to flush draw. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. So, the plan probably was like maybe from him peer once, and then for the small sizing. But I think when I bet ace king, for example, then it gets really bad, and then the turn goes check check, and the river he kind of loses to my bluffs as well. Yeah. Now two flush draws there. He has spades. Yeah. No clean outs really. I think I would go for the fold here. But you could also argue like, I mean, he still beats some hands. He still beats some bluffs, maybe some diamonds, some clubs, king, queen, um, some ace five suited that I have in my range. Uh, but still super hard to play that hand, especially because the river doesn't really change anything. Uh, it does, it yeah. changes 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 a lot. If it's a diamond or a club, he doesn't know what to do. Now he asks for yeah. an account, how much I have behind, which is interesting. So I was not sure here really what he what he is about to do. Peels again doesn't believe. I mean, we should probably not bet like ace king clubs or ace king diamonds anymore because he can check jam. He can now he would start jamming his jack tens or sets or maybe ace jacks. Yeah. And that would be a disaster. So be quite a bit of a disaster. Yeah, for sure. Or if we have king queen suited, and we probably just what would be our bluffs, our triple barrel bluffs, just some ace queen off combos or Yeah, it's it's best to block the jack twice. So if I would have hearts or spades would be pretty good. Uh yeah. and unblock basically all the diamonds and clubs. Yeah. So like some ace king, ace queen combos that don't have a diamond. Yeah, and ace king is even the question, do we need to bluff that or do we have showdown value even if he calls king, queen, yeah. ace, queen and other nut flush draws if we have no diamonds. So I think ace king is not even always bluffing the, the turn even with perfect suits. He just yeah. snap calls me off here, which is like crazy um, and puts me on exactly king, queen, queen, nine suited type hands. He would have looked great when I had like the ace five suited. But in this case, we just uh, double up and win a 20k pot, which was nice, of course. Oh, that's a sick call. Yeah, that's I a mean, sick call. Yeah. And he also didn't take too long. He was not tanking too long. He was just like, yeah. all right, don't believe you. Insane. Um, yeah, I defended the pocket eights. Flop goes check, check. Um, it shouldn't really go check, check too often. So I am already a little bit suspicious because checking makes sense with 5-3, makes sense with 7-8, uh, but not with like his 10-9, his jack-10, like all his garbage. So he always has oh. kind of something, mm -hmm. I think. So yeah, and if we get checked check down to the river, I think my pocket eights should always be a, val a value bet. Basically, I always have the best hand. Maybe he has some pocket queens that he is playing that slow. Um, I mean, if you know that the ranges are so wide, he can have like four or five off, queen yeah, five, yeah, yeah. just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And on the river, I was really not sure if I get bluffed here. I was really debating calling it off. But yeah, it's so so easy for him to not bluff. So goodbye pocket eights also not a spot where i print money and people just randomly turning hands into a bluff on the river i think so yeah, yeah i folded pretty quickly there but that's kind of my approach to online poker as well so usually you don't make that much money especially in like 200 and 150 and l with bluff catching people that need to have crazy bluffs turning hands into a bluff and stuff but yeah. but make more money with just value bet them to death because they always click the call button yeah there, that's a good uh good piece of advice i think everyone could uh take this advice very serious i yeah. see it here also live in vegas right now just... yeah yeah and, properties. and we also argued at the table, if I remember correctly, maybe you can give me your opinion, um, that everyone who beats like 200 Zoom, 500 Zoom online should beat like 25, 50, 50, 100 live. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was, we, we were like arguing about that. But yeah. I don't think there's anything to argue about. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So yeah, I was I was on the same page. I was like, okay. Uh, I would even argue anyone that beats, I mean, these live games often you have like <clears throat> very, very bad wrecks, but life is just so much weaker. So you don't really uh, need to be that good, but mm -hmm. online you need to be really good to be yeah. those pools, right? Yeah, because yeah. very often, you play, especially when you play Zoom 500, you have a lot of lineups when the tape, where you don't have a fish for like yep. several orbits. Yes. Um, and talking about pocket sevens here, I turn yeah. them into a bluff. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes multi-way, it goes check, check, check on the flop. Now he delayed bets. He could have something like 8-6, but I think the most important part here is to block 7-5 uh, and mm -hmm. get him off like a weak king that bets for the sizing of protection and basically attack that capped range that didn't bet on the flop with some kind of decent blockers. I wouldn't do that too much because I don't try really to bluff people off big hands and you can see him not believing already but uh i get it through i remember him asking me after the hand if i bluffed him or not in that spot because he was kind of suspicious but i think with my hand it makes a little bit of sense to put them into a big check race yeah and i was prepared to load the gun on the river as well yeah i mean there's still like all the eight eggs and hearts right yeah uh, yeah i yeah. know ah, it's diamond draw sorry <clears throat> yeah i think it will already work very often on the turn already so yeah and also co looks kind of strong when he bets into three people and we start check raising uh on the bigger side could get could get some credit at least yeah i mean it's similar to the hand we had earlier with your ace four right you get caught by ace queen hearts ace, uh, ace queen diamonds yeah. ace jack diamonds yes 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 sometimes he has king x and diamonds but unlucky but you get him to fold, like jacks, tens. You know, you also unblock those. You unblock ace eight. You unblock queen eight suited. Yeah. On the most like eight x hands he has, even ace eight off perhaps. That makes a lot of sense to me. Three bet pot against the caller four eight five. Not the greatest board I was looking for because I rarely have six seven. I basically never have a set. Maybe pocket eights. So I think in game theory, especially so deep, I want to have what some checks here. With ten six off. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I've I've no idea. Like this is this is uh, this is uh, Emir. So uh, I learned that the hard way that this guy can is capable of uh, anything, any anywhere. But you have that type of player sometimes live. I think. Mm -hmm. um, four and five again. I could be anything. I could I could argue for checking because. Under the gun could make my life a living hell by check raising a lot and put me in a tough spot. Uh, but I think uh, live, I just want to go for, again, just want to go for the bet. Um, yeah. See what develops uh, and not try to protect my checking range too much. And on that turn, obviously, I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> and with that turn card being so good for my range means if I have any kind of king-queen bluffs or betting my ace-king, then I'm the only one really improving on that turn because he's not check-calling out of posi position with something like, yeah, king-queen, ace-king too often, ace-king probably four bets free. So if anything, this card is pretty good for me being aggressive and I don't need like any kind of big sizings because my value range would be also like nines plus here. I would still bet my nines, tens, and then get a free showdown for a small sizing. So this is why I went really, really small. I, I would, by the way, already fall on the flop with the ace, jack, and diamonds. I mean, what do you three bet? You three bet ace, queen, you three bet ace, king. Um, you three bet some ace, five, ace, four. Like, so even your bluffs got there. So you're just really hoping for the king, jack, queen, jack suited. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then even Which, if, the, if the eighth or jack comes on the turn, you're not super happy. I would fold this all. I am really surprised how sticky people are in there. Oh, well, like, oh, I have ace, high, I have to call it. But like, yeah. if you think about the range, you, th you three are from the cutoff also pretty strong. I mean... Mm -hmm. Against under the gun at a call, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was in straddle. I think he overcalled it. I just see it from the... I mean, I guess that's fine with the straddle, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, preflop goes really fast. Yeah, so Andrea is opening with jacks. Emil calls ace four suited. I I descend to call, decided to call queen nine suited. Um, mm -hmm. on the loser side, but I think plays well multi-way. And I saw the call from Emil on the river, so I obviously figured that I want to play hands uh, with him. And then, yeah. Yeah, they're talking about me right now. 
<laughs> what are they talking about? I, I was meeting them in the gym the day after I won big in the game the night before and I was going to the gym and I was like super pumped and I was walking through the casino like it all belongs to me right this is all my place now and they saw me and they were like yeah this guy was walking around like a fucking pimp now because he won one night so they're making fun of me right now which which is fair I met the uh, uh, the big guy in the white t-shirt in the gym earlier <laughs> yeah and he's just mocking me right now for like working out being healthy looking good looking strong uh, and he said it's easy when you win but it's very hard to hit the gym the next day you lost a big pot that is true <laughs> yeah meanwhile i started to step my top two pair here mm -hmm. and got called And this hand, when I remember correctly, also gets a little bit of action. I'm gonna pump your fucking ass off screen, guys. You're gonna finally start to play like not I'm gonna play even harder. <laughs> sorry, ladies, sorry. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse that. <laughs> huh? Huh? Can you <laughs> right, Turn card, not the card I was looking my for, friend, really. Um... Oh, I remember. Oh, okay. Okay, I missed that. Turn is actually pretty good. Uh, I thought it was another turn card. So, yeah, I would go for stacks here. Yeah. Obviously, it should, should be the plan. Top to pair, like, what you're really going to do. Um, yeah. Don't have to make it massive, because I know he's playing, like, four and a half thousand behind, and I can still jam for less than pot on the river. Obviously, when you have the queen and the nine, it's kind of hard to get called by worse. Um... But yeah, there's nothing we can just do when we're in position instead of just betting and trying to play a big pot. I mean, calling ten nine with a ten and hearts on the turn is just a disaster. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree. You could be dead like, already. Hearts, like unlocking the diamonds, like the king, king ten diamond floats. The like it just. Yeah, and what do you do now, right? So even if you made your hand, kind of, you still lose to every queen. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard to play that hand. So a folding turn would be good. He just jams, right? <laughs> now look what happens. And I fucking hate my life. <laughs> look at look at my face, man. I'm disgusted. Like King Jack gets there, spades get there, Jack eight. He could still have a three or like some kind of queen three suited. And I just hate every single second of my life. Yeah. What do you do here? What do you think? I I would fold, I guess. I mean, this line is just complete full of shit. I don't know. Just, I mean, it's just so often the flush, the queen X and spades. Yeah. Also, I don't have the queen of spades. That would help a lot if I had like the yeah. queen of spades. I know already I need to fold, but I really don't want to. I just hate yeah. it. I mean, you just see all this random shit happening, right? Yeah, yeah. you and see the that. Yeah. Play and... Exactly. Yeah, I end up folding. And I, th I still like my fold. But when I saw yeah, that on okay. stream, I was running over to him. I was like, what did you do? And he was actually planning to turn that into a bluff. So that's pretty sick. I was impressed by that bluff. Yeah. He got me to fold a better hand here. But again, I think the turn um, should have folded the 10-9. Yeah. Uh, but he got me there on the river totally. I was I was hating every second of it. Yeah. So the race 100 is actually not a race. That's the straddle. So it goes ace-jack opens for 300 here. And as I said earlier, those pairs, even pocket eights, I just want to play them heads up. I think they are opening too wide. As you can see, cold callers behind you just calling with some hands. Uh, and I can see like all this, the small pocket pairs are just peeling. Uh, and Andrea cold called with pocket sixes earlier. I cannot imagine he folds this one. Sam is maybe in with sevens. So yeah, this illustrates the point really well. Like that these small pocket pairs are just not going anywhere. And then you should go preflop as thin for value as possible. Yeah. Yeah, this is also something we discussed here a lot during the WCP when ranges are so wide that 
especially for middle position and hijack and early positions against open races, you want to play three bet only with your entire range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also it's super nice. Ridiculous over calls, yeah. like jack seven suited on the cutoff and eight five suited. And then your equity that, let's say, has 50% heads up goes down to 25 or 20%. Yeah. Or like even 10% if you have multiple mm -hmm. over callers because mm -hmm. they just love playing pots, right? Yeah. And they are over call. If you raise UTG, call MP, they even start over calling eight, seven off on the button. Yes. And you might think, oh, it's good, but you're going to be out of position, right? And it's very often hands that have two live cards and uh, you, you, you want to really punish them by three betting wide. And if they want to enter the pot with a and suited and call a cold call, 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 call a three, but then, all right, go ahead. But you're going to be in a really, really bad situation and you, you punish them. Yeah, and having these three bet only approaches is also a super nice way of simplifying your strategy because you always know uh, what your range looks like going to into post flop scenarios, into post flop spots. Yeah. You know exactly. I have this hand, this hand, this hand, and you can just make of it. Okay, this is a good flop for me, bad flop for me. It makes life so easy, yeah. so simple. In hindsight, I think I shouldn't really have bet into five people, even though my eights would like to, and I sometimes or at least some amount have the best hand here. Um, but I think just just checking and uh, yeah, not investing too much money into the pot so, with so many people behind is a better play, even though I have a hand that really would like to bet. What do you think? I think <clears throat> I like the bet. I just think it's a bit too big. I mean, your yeah. purpose is really just fold out the queen jacks hearts, the queen 10 clubs kind of hands, mm -hmm. the ace four and clubs, get a bit of value from fives and uh, sevens. Six I think X. just 800 does exactly the same, right? Yeah, I could save there some some amount for sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And I don't think, looking at the hands, that I will ever see a turn with this hand, which is sad, but uh, yeah. I always, like, I already felt weird when getting two calls behind me. We basically know, okay, this is not going to go too well, especially when we have yeah. a hand that is, that is basically impossible to improve. Even the eight of diamonds is uh, not the greatest card in the deck. Yeah. Um, I mean, Poker Sam, I don't. You should always fold the sevens there. Yeah, I think so too. He could already yeah. be pretty dead. Very hard to improve. His seven of diamonds is already dead. So he's really happy with the seven of hearts only. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Andrea goes for the race here. I, Bori has an easy decision with Ace Jack. I have an easy decision. <laughs> And yeah, King Queen. Hmm. What to do? Raises 5k. Has 8k behind, lots of callers. He just raises the flop. The problem with this hand, I think, is that you could be up against the nut flush, and then you have a really big problem, or against a really strong hand, then you have a really big problem as well. Um, yeah. But obviously, life ranges are pretty wide. Could maybe be some 7 8 sometimes, could be a lower flush draw sometimes. Um, yeah. So it's kind of hard to figure out what to do here. Yeah, I just fold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me too, me too, me too. Yeah. But I could see, like, with that draw or with, like, you could, could talk yourself into something else, maybe. Yeah. Also, like, I think from what I remember, um, did the video just stop? Oh, yeah, it's just stopped. Oh, no, it's not, right? It's just stopped on my end. So 37 minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah, but th this is yes, not... Because you didn't play more hands, right? So... No, yeah, I didn't play more hands. Yes, yes, yes. But we can maybe say what happens uh, What happens in the hand. So yeah. Um, yeah, they get it in. Uh, the guy, the Pacho Herrera, is is a uh, rec from Czech Republic, also plays EPTs. I, I won't leak his name because I don't know if he wants yeah. that or not. Um, but he's a good player. But he got it in and regretted afterwards against... Uh, Yeah, being up against sixes. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And we played after the stream in the same lineup as well. We got a nice table prepared for us. So that was a great time. And I thought, like, we played six hours total. We cut it down to 37 minutes. So this is why the cuts were, like, so sharp mm -hmm. uh, to get every hand in there and not make this, like, a four-hour video, basically. Um so yeah, lots of good yeah. content, lots Very of good fun. Yeah, for sure. And, and some really cool adjustments for life as well. Yeah, I think so too. So you just have to also relying on your intuition a bit, like read into people, yeah. sizing tells, timing tells. You said it yourself. Some sizings just doesn't add up. It just doesn't make any sense. And usually then it's the case and it doesn't make sense. Then there's also not the yeah. hand behind that that we think of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think 
this, w- awesome. this would be it. Thank you so much for your commentary and for reacting Wait, were to you all up this. After the session? Yes, I was up after the session. But nice. yeah, I also uh, just got the invitation to that live stream game before because we were playing in that same lineup the night before. We played for so long. There was so much money at stake, big stacks. And yeah, we had a ton of fun. And then, yeah, basically it was lucky to get a seat here because you're not getting the chance um, all the time to play like super high stakes live. Yeah. Awesome. Jan, thank you so much. Great footage. I think people are going to enjoy it. Yeah, thank you so much for reacting, for coming uh, into the video out of uh, America during the WSOP. You seem to be pretty busy over there. So thank you for taking the time. And yeah, see you guys on the next one, I guess. Cheers. Bye-bye.